What a promise. Oh, here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. We're back. <laughs> All right. I hope everyone can hear us talking through our masks. I'm Jules uh, here at Mary's Tack and Feed. And back here is Lenore. <laughs> and um, we're very excited to be doing a Be Live on Facebook. It's something we're just going to have to polish and get a little better at. But today our guest is Danielle Santos with Charles Owen Helmets. And I had is right around the corner. Charles Owen is renowned for their absolute commitment to absolute safety. And they have a new helmet out with MIPS technology. And Danielle is going to share a lot of information about that with us today. So hi, Danielle. <laughs> Hello. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, tell us about Charles Owen. And we're excited to hear about MIPS. I'm starting to lose you a little bit. Hmm. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I think we're good now. Good. All right. Well, thank you guys for having me. Um, as uh, I've been working for Charles Owen for over 10 years, and I wanted to kind of give people a little bit of information about Charles Owen, talk about what's new at Charles Owen, you know, answer any questions about what's old at Charles Owen. Um, you know, the, the main goal at Charles Owen is rider safety. That's, that's our main mission. And obviously anyone who'd ever met Roy Burek knows that that was his mission. And we, we are very lucky that Roy's son, Owen Burek, has taken over the reins at Charles Owen. So now the company is a fourth generation family owned and run company. That's um, amazing. Charles, it's amazing. You know, we don't see these things very often anymore. Um, the company is based in Wrexham, Wales. It started out in the East end of London in 1911 with Charles Owen himself, which was uh, Roy's grandfather, Owen's great grandfather and started making military helmets in back in before World War One, and moved on to motorcycle helmets in the 20s and then to jockey skulls in the 30s. So Charles Owen has a really long experience with equestrian helmets. Uh, the, the great history, you know, as horse people, we all love to hear how things have changed over the years. The, the really kind of interesting piece is that Aside from jockey skulls, we started to make um, velvet helmets for Roy's sister when she took up riding. And um, so that was the beginning of making the really beautiful, maybe a little less utilitarian at the time um, than a jockey skull, but certainly that was the beginning of making these beautiful, sty beautifully styled riding helmets that we see today. Oh, uh, isn't that nice? Yeah, and, uh, you know, she's, she's still, you know, around, she's a geologist and, um, you know, it, it's nice to hear some different information from, from her and her childhood. So we're based in Wrexham, Wales, which is in the North of Wales and employ about 120, uh, people. The helmets are in our factory are made by people. They're not made by machines necessarily. Um, the stitching is done by a person. It's pretty amazing to see how the work actually gets done. Um, and of course, the people that do the work, the production people, they're riders like us. And so they really get, and I think that that's kind of a key motivation. They really get how these products are used because so many of them ride. I think that that's kind of a unique part of the brand. Um, so also Charles Owen makes body protectors. We own the brand Arrowware and the production line takes a very serious look at both helmet safety and body protection. 
It is um, the the Arrowwear brand is Beta Level Three, and of course there are several different versions, and and the same quality that comes out in our helmets or in our body protection. And of course, it's IHAP, International Helmet Awareness Day. So we want to talk about helmets. Um, the unique part of Charles Owen is the fact that we are tested to three different international standards. The bulk of our, our range, which the ones that you see on a regular basis that you guys have in your store, would be the ASTM F1163, the Pod 115, it's from the UK, and the VG1 from Europe. So with the three different standards, what you're doing is you're looking at a, a larger, wider variety of accident scenarios. So we can't always predict when our horse is going to spook, when our horse is going to stumble, when we might be um, at risk of falling off. So having a wider range of accident scenarios that your helmet is tested to actually protects you against more, op more situations that you would find yourself in. And to me, that is key because, you know, whether you're a professional trainer and you need to to give your lesson in two hours, um, but you want to ride this four-year-old that's a little bit boisterous um, beforehand, or you're a professional, a doctor, a lawyer, um, you know, a CEO of a company, or a school teacher, or a mom. You want to be able to continue to do the things that you do in your regular life, but enjoy riding your horse. And I think that that's probably something that hit me about eight years ago uh, when I was riding. If you are on a horse that might be, or if you're, you're just worried about falling off, it's really nice to know, it's nice to have the confidence in your helmet that you're gonna be okay when you get off. Or you know, the next day, if for some reason your horse decides to enjoy himself a little too much. So those three standards, are in nearly all of Charles Owen helmets. And I just want, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I just oh. wanted to what you're saying, I think I think calls home to a lot of people. And for us working here in the tax shop, mm -hmm. we talk to so many equestrians of so many different levels and needs every day that I think what really shakes us up is that so many accidents are the fluky, crazy oh. things that it's not even about how good a rider you are or how much risk you think you're assessing. It's right. some of the craziest stuff. So, right. this one. And that, that's where I came to, to find that situation of, um, or to have it hit me in my, my own mind. Um, when I was saying earlier, it's about being able to get up the next day and go to work. I remember it, it was about eight years ago when I was out riding and my horse did something really silly and I nearly fell off. And it was one of those bucks that kind of involved a lot of other acrobatics <laughs> and I up a little bit. And all I could think of is, Oh my gosh, if I did fall, you know, thankfully, you know, and we all knock on wood, we knock on our head and, and say, at least I have what could protect me the most. And, and you can get up and go to work. Or if you have small children, um, you have a large family, it, it just gives you a little bit of peace of mind. Loving dog, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's another part of it, you know, if you're out competing and you have to get home and feed your other horses or feed your dog, you don't want, or your cat, you don't <laughs> want those animals to be left alone while you are shipped off to the hospital. So, um, so yeah, being able to protect yourself gives you peace of mind. And then you can focus on the enjoyment of riding because that's why we all do it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We, we do invest quite a lot of time and emotion and money into our horses. And so to be able to enjoy it is so important. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so there's also the, the four-star helmet that incorporates onto those three standards, the Snell standard, which is for the extreme situation, eventing, um, you know, racing over jumps, obviously, is another extreme situation. For, for those rotational falls, it is 
it's a really amazing level of protection for your head to wear the four star. Not everybody would need it. Not everybody would want to wear a skull cap. So that's why the, the three standards are so amazing. And the most popular helmets that we carry is the JR8, the Air 8, and the Pro 2 Plus, the, um, the MyPS. Those are all um, multiple standard helmets. The JR8 is actually dual standard. Um, it does not have the PASA 1.5, but in fact, it it is carrying the same level of safety as the rest. So, um, but it is not presented to PASA 1.5. So looking for safety performance, it is really um, key to make sure you're looking at what is inside the helmet, what level of safety is inside the helmet. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Uh, part of that safety, I think you're probably getting ready to bring up um, the kite mark as well. I mean, that's something I've always been really impressed with with, with Charles Owen because I, I don't think there are a lot of helmet companies that do that. Right. Can you tell us about that? So the kite mark is from BSI, and so the the use of BSI is to they actually test the batches of helmets, and and it's a really stringent test. And Paso One Five actually has a um, uh, higher drop test. It has some crush testing to it. It has um, the flat surface. It has a spike that we that we don't see in ASTM. And in fact, we had a top rider who had uh, an accident recently where the horse's stud went into her air eight. And oh yes, and Actually, we, we had the helmet back for us to re do the research and, and investigation. And you could fit one of the studs actually into the hole in her helmet. And she is fine. She was competing two weeks later. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. So, um, and the idea of a Charles Owen helmet in, in the expanded polystyrene, which is the, the third level and, and I can speak of the four, four layers of safety in, in each of the Charles Owen. But the third layer is the white polystyrene. And sometimes you see it as black, um, but that's the microscopic bubble wrap. That's the liner inside the helmet that protects you. And what that does is it actually acts like a crumple zone in your car. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we drove around in big steel vehicles that you know, it was like a cage inside and you might've gotten, you know, tossed around a little bit if you had a, an accident, but generally the car did not. Um, we lost you, Daniel, where'd you go? Oh, I can no. still hear you. Yeah. Like, there there you go. There we go, sorry. There she is. So, <laughs> um, great. so essentially the helmets act like a modern car where it has the crumple zone. So you actually, the helmet destroys itself in order to protect your brain. And in terms of the four layers of a helmet, the outer layer, which is the outer cover, whether that's suede or velvet or a matte finish paint or even a gloss finish paint, that outer exterior is meant to um, slide across the ground. So unlike um, a piece of bread, falling jelly side down or a, a pencil falling on its eraser, you're actually getting some slippage across the ground, whether you're in sand or bluestone or um, grass. The next layer is the fiberglass shell. And sometimes there's high grade plastic um, in the shells and that will dissipate some of the energy of the, of the impact. And then, of course, the expanded polystyrene. And um, the fourth layer, which we're starting to learn more and more about, and we've had a, uh, a part of it in Charles Owen helmets for years, for you know 20 years, is the, the liner, the helmet liner. And that kind of works with MIPS. So within your helmet, your helmet liner grips your skin. 
And that we also test helmet fit with the skin. So when you put on your helmet, your skin moves up and down. Your eyebrows, most people will test their fit, whether their eyebrows move up and down when they move the helmet, right? Um, and so that actually is your scalp's way of protecting your brain. So your scalp has a natural five millimeters of movement. MIPS has, has come up with this amazing technology where it extends that five millimeters. Oops, I'm going to put it over here. Um, it extends, extends that five millimeters to be 10 to 15. So what you're seeing is that it can move. So what that movement does, I'm not sure if the camera is picking up the movement very well, but the movement will also slow your brain down so that it doesn't go against your skull um, in the same way without it. And you can see in, in all the MIPS literature how, what the brain looks like without MIPS and what the brain looks like with MIPS. And so essentially, the goal is to slow your brain down so that it doesn't, so, go ahead. What does MIPS mean exactly? Multi-impact, and of course I always have to check and make sure. Multi-impact protection system. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, sorry. Of course, that's the one thing that I always, I always know it in the back of my mind and then forget. Oh, sure. As we, as we start to talk. Sorry, multi-directional impact protection system. Okay. I knew I had forgotten one word. So, <laughs> and MIPS is, um, is very well tested and adopted in other sports. And they saw this opportunity in equestrian because, of course, we don't fall straight down. And we don't fall, generally, we don't lawn guard. Um, and generally, we don't fall like a belly flop. We generally fall at an angle, and that tangential force is what they're working to um, to lessen, so that your concussion potential is reduced. So it's been a wonderful add-on, and I I'd like to think of it as a um, you know we've always worn seatbelts and we expect mm -hmm. seatbelts to be tested and and have real scientific proven evidence to keep us in our seat, which will keep us more protected. When we add in the airbags, we're even further protected. And I look at MIPS as being like an airbag in a car. It just adds to it. All um, right. Um, so the other sorts of things in Carl's on that's a little different is the the harness the harnesses you know one of the most important parts of fit is keeping the helmet stabilized on your head your helmet is that is the key to your safety is wearing a helmet that fits you well and properly so the the best thing that we can do and especially during covid a lot of us are trying to shop um, from afar we're lucky if we can shop in stores, um, but sometimes you need to feel confident on your own that your product is fitting you. Um, and one of the things that I always tell people to check is that your helmet feels like a very firm, snug handshake. Mm -hmm. It should fit you all around, all around your head with no gap. Um, sometimes that might feel a little bit tight for people. And, and then I used to say to people, you know, if you're unsure, then maybe you can walk around in the store and maybe you were not able to do that. But if, if you um, picked it up and you've gone home, you can just put it on your head and maybe watch a little bit of TV and see how it feels. But it should feel as snug as, you can, as, as it can be with no gaps and to make sure that the harness, while the harness is there to ensure the stability of the fit. The harness shouldn't be the thing you're relying on to make your helmet stay on. Because if that's the case, if your, if your harness for some reason is not adjusted as well as it could be, you're, you're leaving yourself vulnerable. So 
um, having making sure that you have the properly fitted helmet with a properly adjusted harness is really key. And we do a variety of harnesses. Um, we have on the JR8, there's the crossover design, which makes sure that your helmet is stabilized on your head. Um, your uh, Air 8 and, and other styles have the Grip-X in the, in the back, which grips the back of your head and gives you more confidence that your helmet is going to stay on. Um, and, of course, the traditional design of some of the velvet hats. So it's, it's amazing to see the different types of harness um, setups that can, that can add to the fit of your helmet. <clears throat> and I don't know if um, anybody has any questions at this point, but certainly you know, at the end, if anyone wants to ask a, a, a pointed question about anything that I've said or anything that I didn't say, I'd love to be able to chat more about, about helmets. Um, we do do customization. I don't know if um, we, we certainly see a lot of interest in the piping helmets in different color ver uh, variations. Um, we, we don't see as many different color hats in the US as we do in the UK, but certainly sometimes people want to do something different than black, which is very exciting to work with. Um, so, <clears throat> and we do have an online configurator if you want to see what your helmet would look like if you did a couple of different um, piping colors and to see how that might, that might suit you. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, when to replace your helmet. When to replace your helmet is a really important um, aspect of making sure that you're safe if you fall. And again, I, I've always had these little things that I, I keep in the back of my mind to share with people. If you can't remember that you didn't fall on your head, chances are you probably did, even if it's a secondary part of your fall. Um, sometimes we fall on our hip or on our bottom, and then we end up falling back and, and hitting our head, and we don't really realize that we did. We just feel that we maybe, you know, ended up on our bottom. So if you can't remember if you didn't, you know, so because some people are lucky enough to fall and land on their feet, uh, <laughs> those are always the, the ones that are, that are so much better and kinder, but, mm -hmm. uh, we do have the accident replacement, um, program and that's a very important way to make sure that you are always protected, you know, and that program is, is meant to make sure that people aren't wearing compromised helmets. So I didn't yeah. know had any questions on that. Um, that's, that's an awesome feature, and I love how generous Charles Owen's accident replacement program is because I, I know that it does extend through three years at different levels, uh, which is fantastic. And I know here at Mary's, we actually very much encourage that. And it's no easy thing to convince somebody to buy a brand new helmet if they feel like they're fine and their helmet looks okay. You probably see a lot of helmets come back for crash replacements that don't look crashed, but it's so yeah. important to do that, right? We certainly do. We do see, and and sometimes um, you know we see helmets that have had really severe changes on the expanded polystyrene, and the person is completely fine. In fact, mm -hmm. I had an event rider who, apologies for the little creature that's behind, that was behind me. Um, uh, he brought a helmet to me and he said, I fell off and here's my helmet. And it was uh, actually a four star. And he walked away and I said, how did, how, what happened? And he said, well, you know, it was just kind of an easy fall. My air vest deployed. Um, you know, I, I hit my head, but I was fine. I rode two more horses. Everything was okay. I never had a headache. I never felt 
uncomfortable. And I looked inside the helmet and he had a very severe um, indentation in the expanded polystyrene. And I asked him, I said, are you sure you didn't have any repercussions? And he said, no, I was fine. And his wife who was standing there said he was fine. Wow. And that just goes to show you that, that that's that crumple zone idea. The helmet is meant to, to destroy itself in order to protect you. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're really excited about the MIPS helmet uh, that's come out, all of, all of the Charles Owens. And I do want to take an opportunity to thank you at Charles Owen for offering a MIPS helmet as a giveaway for our Friday freebies. We, we have this Friday freebie thing online that we do um, several Fridays out of the month. And it's very exciting to have a Charles Owen MIPS helmet to give away. So um, yeah. that's that's pretty amazing. And anyone can enter to, to win that on our Facebook Friday freebies. Um, yeah, we're, you know, we, here at Mary's, we've done a lot of training with our staff to fit people. And we've met Charles or Roy Burek. Roy Burek's been out. I, I can remember meeting him. Um, and we actually do a fit slip with everybody and ask them to wear things around the house for a couple of hours. And uh, we facilitate a lot of the crash replacements right through our store for our customers on their behalf um, as a service because it is such a generous offer and and a, a really important one. So yes. thank you for the Friday freebie MIPS because that, that technology, it won't be long before, you know, MIPS is going to be probably in every helmet. <laughs> it is, um, it certainly adds safety to our, to our helmets and, you know, helmet design has come so far in so in a short period of time. And now of course we have this amazing technology that can add to our protection. So why wouldn't you want to choose it? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, let's see, we have a, our International Helmet Awareness Day is coming up this weekend. That's pretty exciting. So this is a timely video for that event. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> And I think that it's really interesting, um, or, or rather, it's really important to, to go to stores and to be professionally fitted by people like yourselves because, you know, everyone always has a question. And even if you go and you get it fitted and you try it on, then you have somebody to go back to if there's something that's not quite right. And you yeah. can ask the questions. You have this consultation opportunity. Um, so I really, you know, suggest to people to, to really take advantage of the people in stores to be able to have that conversation, you know, instead of instead of just um, taking a chance or buying just whatever whatever might be um, the first thing that you see. And so having that, I'm sure you guys have quite a lot of people who do fantastic fittings. Yeah. Um, and knowing that, you know, utilizing the, the measuring tape and, and putting the, the, the tape around the place where your helmet, um, head, helmet headband is going to go, which of course is one finger's width above your eyebrow and just above your ear and around the back of the bump of your head. And, you know, that's, that's not something that everybody does or can do on their own. Right, so it is hard. It's very hard. And, and it, so that's, that's why I think having, having the resource to go into a store is so amazing. And especially I think now that COVID has hit us that we forget how much we yeah. enjoy going to retailers. Yeah, we get pretty sophisticated. I mean, I know there's, there's different shapes of helmets and Charles Owen has such a good um, selection of different models and different shapes that there's there's hardly anybody who could come in and not walk out with the Charles Owen fitting very well um, exactly. and yeah for sure and I think so much extra confidence when you get on your mark mm -hmm. absolutely yeah okay. um, so 
I wonder if there are any questions out there that um, anybody would like to hear more about or have answered that maybe we haven't brought up. Um, you know, caring for the helmet is always really important and a lot of people have some different ideas about that. What would be your best advice on how to in general care for a helmet? So we do have, um, we do have, we do make a cleaner and deodorizer, but if for some reason that's not available to you, you know, a 70% isopropyl alcohol, which of course we are now all very well aware of, um, <laughs> is, a, is a fantastic cleaner. And um, I've used the alcohol wipes that you can get at any grocery store or um, uh, uh, like a Walgreens or, or any, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and with Roy's blessing, um, you know, and just wiping me, and you only want to wipe the help headband on the inside with the with the wipe to make sure that you just you clean out any of the bacteria. Um, because when we wear sunscreen and makeup and hair products, those um, those fatty particles that are in because a lot of that stuff has oil in it, those oils feed bacteria, and the bacteria is what makes your helmet smell. So if you can get rid of that bacteria, sorry, if you can get rid of those those little fatty particles in the products and, and sweat, of course, you can then avoid the smelly helmet syndrome that we all <laughs> drink, okay? um, mm -hmm. and You don't have to necessarily worry about, you know, spraying it, spraying it with a, a heavy deodorizer. So I, I always urge people, um, to do the, the alcohol wipes because they do make a huge difference, and they and it dries very quickly. So, um, so yeah, yeah. And then um, a lot of people have concern about um, cleaning the outside of the helmet, whether it's the micro suede or if it or if it's the the matte finish. Um, we usually just tell them to use a, a damp clean cloth for that. Does that yeah. sound? Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no dishwashers. <laughs> and, and with your suede, with your suede helmets, you can let whatever could possibly have gotten on there dry and use a brush that has a tendency to work really well. Um, but certainly the damp cloth with just water will clean off any leather look helmet or any of the matte finish. Um, I would avoid, I think a lot of us now are, um, using wipes for a lot of things because it just gets you clean really quickly and you feel like you've maybe dispelled some some of the virus but you know baby wipes are great but i wouldn't use it on a, a painted helmet or a leather look helmet just the water just water oh, and a dance sorry it's okay i'll get you back the camera just cuts out periodically i'm not mm -hmm. sure why. Mm -hmm. So sorry about that. There we it's go. Okay. <laughs> so so yeah, <laughs> using a damp cloth is is fantastic, or a dry brush if the helmet is dry and maybe it has mud on it or something like that. They'll just spruce it up a little bit. And um, we usually tell people here too to actually be careful about leaving it in a tremendously hot car. Um, or hot garage, you want to kind of treat it with a little more love than that. The heat fluctuations can be detrimental. Would you agree with that? Yes, the, the expanded polystyrene is very sensitive to heat. Um, and you want to make sure that you don't do things with your helmet that you wouldn't do with your head. So, you know, leaving it in a hot car that gets up to, you know, 150 degrees plus is very damaging to the polystyrene. And that will leave you vulnerable if you were to fall. So mm -hmm. um, making sure that that doesn't happen is, is important. Um, we've also talked about cold um, in the past. And I've never had any, any real significant um, advice about extreme cold. But since it, <coughs> since it is polystyrene, excuse me, <coughs> you, you want to make sure that you're not treating it in a way that you wouldn't treat your own head because it is meant to protect your head. Mm -hmm. So no negative 10 degrees in the car, I would say. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and safe carriers, because you don't want to drop it, because that's an impact. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, and we, and certainly when you drop it on concrete or on a, um, a ceramic tile or something like that, you're certainly going to do some level of damage, whether it's cosmetic or it's um, more, more internal than that. So we probably can, can wrap things up here. Um, it's been very informative. I, I know for me, when I think of Charles Owen, it's just synonymous, like I said, synonymous with absolute safety because of, of so many home companies, they just put safety so paramount and so, so absolutely first before design, before being like everyone else, before anything else, it's always safety. Is there a takeaway you would like the world to know about Charles Owen, when they think of Charles Owen, what else would you want them to remember most? Well, the, the, the main takeaway for me, you know, and, and this is not necessarily Charles Owen, but, but fit. Fit is so important. And that's why we have such a large range of helmets. You know, <clears throat> we may sell only a few of an unpopular looking style, but it might fit people really well. And mm -hmm. And so, and that's one of the things about the Air 8, the Air 8 fits so many heads. Um, but really fit is paramount. Fit is so important and key to your safety. Um, and there's the, the motto of Charles Owen that's been used for, for so many years. And it's just the idea of creating a world, you know, a safer world. And that's a safer world for riders. Well, as Mary's Tack and Feed, we're definitely on board with that. I can tell you helmets are one thing that we would rather someone leave without one if we didn't feel like we found the yeah. fit that was appropriate. And we will tell them that. <laughs> and if they insist, we'll we'll put it we'll put it on the receipt. This was this is not a fit we recommend. Right. Uh, but we're, we're we're very stringent on that. Um, so I think I think Roy would be proud <laughs> of us for that. And Charles we'll O'Neill. Yeah. Um, and we've gotten some great training from our fantastic rep who we have a very close relationship with, Diana. Um, so Absolutely. she has she has made sure that we are walking the walk over here. So <laughs> that's good. That's good. Diana, fantastic. Well, I want to thank you for your time, Danielle. Um, do we have any questions to wrap up? Are we good? Uh, so thank you. Um, I hope we can do some more of these. And our, uh, our International Helmet Awareness Day is this weekend. So, you know, for anybody watching or sees this, um, come on down. We're here at Mary's Tech and we will expertly fit you. Um, and uh, this weekend is, is the time to do it. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you again for having me. Yeah, thank you. Very much appreciated. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.